Hello. <coughs> no, no. Hello. I have these two flight controllers here. On the left we have an Omnibus F3 and on the right we have an Omnibus F4. F405 to be specific, which means it can run ArduPilot, which is great, and the one on the left cannot, which is not so great. Um, the other difference is that the one on the right has an F written on it and the F stands for fa failed. Uh, and the reason that it's failed is that the gyro, which is an MPU 6000, it only works in two axes, I think X and Y, and the Z axis is not working. I'll show you in a minute what that was. Um, I forget which axis was the failed one, but one of them's not working. Um, but this gyro over here, which is also an MPU 6000, I presume, uh, was working fine last time I used it. Actually, there's no pins soldered into this, so I'm kind of wondering if I've ever, ever actually used this board at all. But Here's hoping that that one works because what I'm going to try and do is put this gyro onto here because this board, I really want to use this, um, these are about $33 or so, so they're not super expensive but it's a little bit annoying because the 30 day um, replacement policy or whatever that Banggood has had expired by the time I realized that the gyro was not working because I bought a few of these all at once and I this was the last one that I got around to using and they said sorry we can't replace that after 30 days they did actually give me three dollar like um, funds in my account or whatever so that was kinda nice but anyway recently I have upgraded my soldering capabilities for a long time the only thing I had to solder with was this sort of uh, single soldering iron with a crappy little wire thing that you put it in and that was it but recently I bought a proper soldering hot air gun and like station, whatever you call it, thing together. And that's been working quite well. And I also got a USB microscope as you may have seen in my video last week. So I've been playing around with those and I'm starting to get ideas about doing things like this. And it's opened up a whole new world of possibility which I'm really excited to try out. So I've called this SMD newbie or something like that in the title. but not completely newbie at this. I have managed to put these two boards together, or a couple of these actually, and this one here as well, but these are both my design that I had made by JLC PCB. So they were made with the intention of being fairly easy to assemble, so you can see everything's fairly spaced out there, and the trickiest thing is the uh, AT Mega 328P in the middle. Um, so that hopefully uh, well, it did work out, but this one here, um, these chips here, these little gyros, they don't have, if we could just focus please, they don't have any pins sticking out the side, so it's the one right there in the middle of the screen on the tip of my fingernail. Um, so this is going to have to be done only with hot air, I presume. Um, anyway, I'm sort of forgetting the main point of this video. The main reason I wanted to do this video, or the main reason I'm recording it at all, is to get the hang of using my new microscope and see if I can record it for YouTube in a way that's going to give nice video and nice audio and what I discovered is that the best way to record the video, or the best result video is done by recording onto the SD card in the camera itself but the best audio is coming from recording into my PC so what I'm going to have to do is join the video and audio together afterward and hopefully it's not going to be too terrible. Anyway, enough enough waffle. Let's let's just get started. Okay, so here we're looking at a display of the gyroscope output. Sorry, it's not the the greatest of views, but it should do for just to show you what I mean. Uh, so if I rotate the board yaw wise, we get large red values. If I rotate it this way, whatever that would be, we get large green values. And if I rotate it in the third axis that way we get nothing. Um, it's a bit hard to see exactly that there's nothing because the other axes are kind of showing a little bit um, but just take my word for it, the blue the blue line there is just stuck at zero the whole way and it's just lucky that the plane that I was installing this in I wanted it to be 90 degrees around so that I could have the USB cable sticking out in a convenient position uh, otherwise I probably would not have noticed this because after I changed the orientation I, I just sort of, you know, you look at the uh, heads up just uh, the artificial horizon there when you're moving it around and you'll notice that when I move it in this axis which is uh, that must be roll I guess yeah that would be roll because I wanted this USB cable sticking towards the front of my plane so that's roll everything moves quite quickly and responds quite well but when you try it in pitch the artificial horizon should be pitching up and down quickly like that quickly 
but it's not. So anyway, I was just lucky that I discovered that. So that's the problem that we're trying to fix. Okay, I had to put the microphone back a little bit because the uh, hot air gun is going to be right in front of it otherwise. Even as it is, it's going to be fairly loud, I think. How's that? <laughs> so anyway, this is the donor board. And unfortunately, that to get this hot air gun in the right place, I have to sort of obscure it like this so that you're not going to be able to see it too well right at the moment when it heats up and pulls off, probably, but... Uh, it's probably the best I can do, I think. I'd hate to screw it up. Oh, okay, that was easy. <laughs> All right. I'd hate to screw something up just because I was trying to show it to you. Huh. I actually feel like I might have pulled that a bit hard when it was coming off. Let's just see if one of these um, pins here has been damaged. Because this is the good one, we want to keep this one. It looks alright. I was surprised at how quickly that came off. I barely, barely started. Alright, so hopefully... Alright, where do we put this to make sure we don't forget which is which? Let's put it up there. Um, now we got to take this out of this. I got one of these little things that you hold stuff in because it's just really annoying if you don't have something like this to hold things still. And hopefully... This will be about right for focus still. Okay. Uh, so now I've got to take this one off and I think I want to come at it from... this side yeah that should work and hopefully it's as easy as that other one was oops gonna move a bit are you Oh, my fingers, damn it. Whoa, somehow the air was blowing right onto my fingers there. Scorsi dake wa gaman shita kedo. Ah, mo. Muri da ne. Okay. Oh, yeah, this angle's not good. No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to have to angle it right down on top like that, so it's going to block your view. But I'd rather do that than burn my fingers, I think. Come on. This one doesn't want to come off so easy. That's more like what I expected. Uh, I wonder what this one looks like underneath. Like. I think the connection should be fine, so it's not an, not an issue with the soldering on this board that's causing it to be faulty, because the two axes that were working, the, um, oh, I forget which ones were working, oh, shit, okay, well that's on the floor somewhere, <laughs> it's, uh, that's long gone, anyway, that was the one we didn't want to keep, so that's fine. Um, <clears throat> now let me grab this again, now I'm thinking, I might just be able to stick this on and heat it again. So this is the good one now. Let's not throw that on the floor. I'm thinking <laughs> I might just be able to stick it on and heat it up again and it'll stick down. Let's just have a little bit closer look at this. Whoa. I wonder if that's supposed to be connected there. Uh, What I might do 
The trouble is if I just put it down now and then I put the hot air gun on it, it's going to blow away because it's, it's just sitting on top of the board. There's nothing really to stop it blowing away. So I'm going to have to put a little bit of the solar paste somewhere. Uh, yeah, but all, all I need is just a little bit to stop it from blowing away. I wonder if that'll be enough. It's worth a try. It would be nice if this worked just like this. Okay, so <clears throat> the dot goes towards the dot. Uh, so it's the other way around, isn't it? Hold on. Just got to shuffle it around. Now we should have the dot facing towards the dot. Yep. And place it down there. Boy, this is this is a bit rough, eh? It'd be funny if it works. But in order to get this to work, I'm gonna have to again angle the soldering, uh, angle the hot air gun directly down on top of it and block your view. So this might not turn out to be a very good video for you after all. That's where we want it to go. And I'm just sort of hoping that that tiny little bit of solder paste that I put in the middle, let me push it down a bit, will stop it from blowing off. Oh no, it's very lightly attached. We shall see. Come on, just a little bit. I don't have any depth perception with this microscope. It's... um. It's hard to tell how far away from the surface the tip of my tweezers are. Uh, I don't know about this, but let's give it a try. <laughs> uh, hmm. Trouble is, I can't even really see myself very well what's going on. So it's shifting over, eh? Hmm. Let's see if we can. Oh, it's kind of stuck there now. So, well, it's not too far off, and that that little bit of heat was enough to melt some of the solder somewhere. So, I might just, oops, I'll just give it another shot, and I'll try and angle the iron from the other side now. Sort of waiting to see if it pulls into place or not. Did it move somewhere? <laughs> Trouble is, I can't. I can't see in the microscope either when I'm doing that. Not just you. So it's stuck on, but hey, well that looks all right. So I'll just go around each side, take a look here. This side looks very nice. It seems to have moved into place. That looks good, eh? Hang on. Oh. <laughs> Alright, let's try this side. This whole thing has got quite hot now, so I can't handle it. Uh, can't handle it too carelessly. Yeah. What's happening on this side? A little bit crooked, but... Uh-oh, is it? What's that there on the side of the chip? Is it, like, boiled out or something? Seems like they're connected, though. Alright, this side... Oh, where has it gone? Where the hell is it? Oh, there. Let me adjust. 
Oh, I've got some pins in the way here. Okay, that looks good as well. That looks very good. So this this side and the other side in this direction look really good. These other two sides are not so great. But I'm guessing, yeah, yeah, they're connected though, eh? Wow. Okay, so with a bit of luck, that's it. <laughs> Let's uh, connect it up and uh, see if it works. We are in business. Look at this. We've got red for your, green for roll, and now we have blue for pitch as well. And if we look at the heads up display, we'll see that the pitch is responding quickly. Um, previously, it was only able to respond from the accelerometer sensor, which is very slow, but the gyro, we can see that it's responding quickly. So I'm really happy about this. I mean, admittedly, it was a little bit lucky that it went that smoothly and that quickly, I think. But this does mean for me that I'm going to be, instead of immediately throwing out these kind of boards as they become deemed to be rubbish, I'm probably going to be inspecting them closely to see what kind of interesting SMD parts they have on there that might be useful and maybe even keeping them and do this, doing this kind of swap a little bit more in the future. So it's really opened up a whole new world. And a new fantastic point of view. No one to tell me no or where to go. Or say I'm only dreaming. Let me share this whole new world with you. <clears throat> oh, sorry, that's enough of that. Anyway, hope that wasn't too boring. Um, <laughs> I always say that, don't I? But there's got to be somebody who's managed to hold their eyelids open until the end of the video. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.